Uh, yeah, I'm gonna wake in Drachmain. I have been since birth. Oh my god! This is easily the most excited I've ever been for any class that has ever released in this game ever. Oh my god. I was so excited for Sage and I was really, really hyped for it, but it is not even close to how amazing Awakening Draconia looks in this little trailer. And I cannot wait to get my hands on it. This class checks all of the boxes for me. It is everything I could have ever wanted in a class. From the aesthetic, from the movement, the speed, the pacing, the weight behind the abilities, it checks all of those boxes. And I am so excited to sink my teeth into this class. It is definitely, without a doubt, my new main. I have been on Awakened Draconia main for the last 45 years of my life, and I am so excited to be able to play this on the 27th. I cannot wait. Luckily for me, I've been able to do a little bit of testing on an early access build for Awakened Draconia on the Global Lab, and I have been putting in a lot of time just tinkering around with the kit and seeing what it is all about and kind of just getting a feeling for it. And I kind of just wanted to take this video right now to kind of talk about my thoughts of the class after messing around for about like 10, 15 or so hours and give you guys my opinions on it and share some of the tech and some of the stuff that I found on the kit as well as combos, movement stuff, and just overall you know, general opinion on play style for small scale, large scale, and 1v1. Before we get into the video though, I just want to say thank you guys for all the support here on YouTube. We've just crossed 10,000 subscribers, which is something I never thought I'd be able to do. So I'm very happy that uh, we've done this milestone and I just want to say thank you for the support and you know, the continued support as we continue to upload videos. Make sure to go into the description and click on that Twitch link and go ahead and follow that. I did a little bit of an Awakening Draconia showcase over on my Twitch stream on this last Saturday. There were codes given out. I went and answered a bunch of questions about Awakening Draconia as well as going over some of the combo stuff and workshopping some of the stuff that I'm using for this video. So make sure to go down in the description, click that Twitch link and check it out. First things first, let's just talk about the aesthetic of the class real quick because I mean, look at this. Look at these weapons, dude. Look at this. Double spear joint, little bop, bop, bop into the, into the big lancer. Oh my God. And the wing and the block. Oh my God. This class looks so amazing. I am so happy with the, how this turns out visually. It looks incredible. Before I start rambling on about all the skills and all the cancels and all the tech that you can do with this class, I want to take a little bit of time and talk about my overall opinion on Awakening Draconia as well as where it's going to fit in Black Desert Online as a class once it does come live. First, let's start off by talking about my overall opinion on Awakening Draconia. The kit itself is very, very well designed. I think that flowing between Hexblood and Dragonblood feels absolutely amazing and allows you to freestyle so many different combos in so many different ways. It just feels so satisfying. I do think that this kit is probably one of the harder classes that they have released in the last couple of class releases. There is a lot going on here and there are a lot of cancels and to get the most amount of value out of all these skills, you really got to use them pretty smart and have very good cooldown management and very good use of specific cancels that add a ton of value, which I will kind of mention a little bit later here in the video. I think that the class in terms of PVP will be a relatively strong rat class and 1v1er. I don't think it is gonna be very good in large scale just due to the fact that there is Suck Draconia that you can play and just kind of run in and run people over. Uh, it kind of has a weird identity issue, in my opinion, Awakening Draconia because it's not really a rat class. Like it's not going to be able to keep up and perform in a similar manner to like Sork or Ninja as a rat class, but it also doesn't really fall into the bruiser or pseudo kind of tank class like Warrior, Valk, Striker, Mystic. It kind of fits somewhere in the middle, but it also is a DR class. So it just doesn't really have like a really solid identity in terms of like large scale meta. I do think that since the kit is so in depth uh, that really good players will perform on it. And I do think that if they do a couple of different tweaks here and there, this class has the potential to be very, very overpowered. And I think that right now the current iteration that we have is exactly where the class needs to be because right now you can kind of jump in on it and play almost strictly from Dragonblood 
and get some pretty good value and probably be pretty okay but you're not going to perform nearly as well as any other class in 1v1s or in 1vx situations if you're only using dragon blood and not utilizing hex blood and all the different cancels that you have in it and you're also probably not going to do nearly as well as you would if you were playing suck track in large scale so you really have to take the time to understand the kit, understand the value of certain skills, how to extrapolate the most value out of some of these more unsafe or riskier skills, and really take the time to master this kit as a whole. And once you do that, I think this class is very strong for what it has and compared to other classes in the game. I really don't want Awakening Draconi to get over buffed, so please PA, Let's do some small tweaks here at the very beginning. Let's not let's not overdo it because we're in a good spot here. Let's, we're in a good spot. Let's not overdo it here. I have spent so many hours testing combos and testing cancels on this Awakening Draconia, and I can confidently say that I cannot possibly put all of the stuff that I've learned and all the stuff that I've tested and, and all the different combos and options you have here in one video because there is just so much that you can do on this kit in terms of you know cycling between forms and combos and catches and getting the most value out of certain skills that you know for a pre-release video where things could easily completely change on the actual release of the class i mean i don't want to take the time make a 45 minute video talking about all that stuff just to have it all change so when the class does come out and if we don't see a lot of very significant changes to the mechanics of the class i will upload a total guide for awakening draconia covering all of the different combos that i have as well as movement and gameplay uh engages and core and cancels and all the stuff that you would want to know if you wanted to play awakening draconia I will have that video out after it's fully released on live servers. What I want to talk about in this video is some basic combos that I found as well as some very important principles that I've used to kind of further understand this kit. Because when this first came out and I looked at all the skills and I looked at all the options I had, I was pretty overwhelmed. And I wasn't really sure how I should go about trying to learn this class because there are so many options and so many ways to do things in this class that you know, finding the optimal route was actually pretty difficult because it seems like there are so many different branching options out of different CCs and different catches that you could really take it a million different ways and kind of get to the same point of, you know, actually killing your opponent. So, so first things first, let's talk about core skills because this has been the talk that I've had with a lot of friends, you know, what core skill should you take? So, there are two good core skills. There is Core Tectonic Slam, which adds a super armor to your forward E, which is a float skill. Uh, dashing float skill allows for a lot of really nice engaging. The flight, uh, the extended dragon flight into forward E is a fully safe engage with the Tectonic Slam core, meaning that you can open up from across the map on somebody and get a catch on them very nicely. I like this a lot for engaging, and I like it a lot also for putting pressure down on people who are a little bit faster. Uh, it allows you to kind of control your spacing a bit and go for catches behind frontals and do a lot of really cool stuff if you know how to use the movement well. There is also Core Aerial Burst, which with uh, Obliterate Unlocked turns into a massive damage skill that also re-KDs. So uh, the big thing that people were very excited about when they first saw this skill was the first hit. The AoE Stiffen is absolutely fat. It has a massive AoE and allows you to stiff a ton of people around you. And then you can go ahead and finish the skill off with Obliterate for a big damage, small AoE knockdown. Just like so. This skill hits for absolute bricks and it's also a DP down. So in terms of combos, if you don't take the core, you can use this skill early on after like a grab for a big amount of burst damage as well as a DP down for the rest of your combo, which is really nice. What I've come to prefer is actually using the core aerial burst but locking obliterate because what this ends up doing is it ends up changing the second hit of aerial burst into a more cone shaped ability that still maintains the KD from the core. So pretty much how it looks is shift F into the stiff and then a pretty good ranged KD that is fully super armor, which is amazing. 
So there is a lot of tech with this skill. I spent probably three hours with Reezy going over some of the different cancels with it. And there are so many that I cannot possibly talk about them all in this video. I'll put a list of all the combos that I've written down for cancels for aerial burst on the screen right now. There are so many just for this one skill that actually provides so much insane amount of value to this core aerial burst with obliterate locked making this my number one choice for the core skill just because of how much versatility it has another important thing to talk about is stance swapping with certain abilities now you can hop our certain abilities and they can put you between different stances depending on you know what hop bar skill you press for example if you if i'm in hex blood which is the red form i can hot bar extinction uh flow extinction right there and it will put me into dragon blood now this is really important to know because otherwise the only way to get to dragon blood is to either hit shift e which is a you know frontal guard uh longer animation uh skill that you use usually when you're in the neutral game or to do it in the middle of a combo so you can activate a certain skill any skill really and then hit spacebar and it'll swap your stance back over to dragon blood or hex blood depending on what stance you start in so it's a really nice way i would kind of view it like a c swap uh but it just keeps you in awakening instead of swapping to pre-awakening and it really does change and add so much extra style to draconia as a class because you can do so many cool combos with it but when you're talking about certain skills that swap your stance, this is a really good way to control what stance you're in at all times without having to commit to using an unsafe skill or commit to using the legacy cooldown uh, because it does have a little bit of damage on it as well as air attack, which is actually pretty nice. So um, there are a couple skills that you will use pretty commonly that will move you between stances. So uh, if you're uh, using WE, which is the hex blood tectonic slam, that will put you into hex blood. All the time you can cast it from dragon blood like i just did doesn't matter at all shift q which is doombringer puts you into dragon blood aerial burst will put you into uh hex blood and uh tectonic slam in dragon blood se will put you into dragon blood from whatever stance you're in which is uh very very nice because uh you don't have to hop bar any of these skills at all you can just input them and they'll throw you into the stance that you want to be in using that using that specific skill and in terms of hot barring skills, you can hot bar extinction, which is uh, probably the only skill I would actually have hot barred to swap stances because this skill situationally is very nice, but it is a risky skill to use. So I only would use it for very specific situations and only when I want to go into dragon blood when I'm uh, in hex blood and I know I can get away with a frontal guard damage skill like that. Another skill that you can use uh, that will move you from dragon blood to hex blood regardless of the stance you're in uh, is storm wall forward rmb this will always put you into hex blood uh, and it is very important to know that because storm wall is a very important cancel skill for a lot of very very nice tech so for example you can do something like storm mall grab which is an iframe grab essentially if you do it and time it correctly which means that you have so much extra pressure on people when you're in a in this engage range and it allows you to really punish people who commit to an essay linger or commit to anything that is uh, a little bit longer of an animation you can instantly get on top of them and punish them with the grab this is probably going to be your number one catch on awakening draconia so knowing what this skill does and knowing that it puts you into hex blood is very very important because you'll be using it a lot and you will do a lot of a lot of times you'll end up using storm Maul and then going into tectonic slam to get back into dragon blood to start SA trading or continue to put extra safe damage down. All right, let's talk a little bit about combos because combos are really, really important for every class, no matter what. And Awakening Draconia has a lot of variations of combos. I think this is really where the skill expression is gonna come from because you have so many different options between Hex and Dragon Blood to do re-CCs, filler damage, and big finishing skills that, you know, you can do so many different combos by tweaking a couple of different skills and it really allows you to kind of utilize all of these skills to the fullest in a lot of different situations. Now, like I mentioned, I do prefer to play with core aerial bursts right now and having obliterate locked. Now, this is something that a lot of people aren't gonna wanna do because obliterate is a massive damage skill. So this is a big trade-off currently to take, 
but this is the way I prefer to play it right now, just due to the fact that the core aerial burst KD with all the cancels that I have feels so good for recc's and it feels so good for things like catching and and actually punishing people who are over committing in on stuff and it feels really really nice just for my personal preference so you know these combos that I'm going to be showing you guys may be something that you won't be able to do because you don't want to copy this kind of playstyle but I assure you there are so many other combo options out there that I can go over and talk to you guys about after the release of awakening draconia to the live servers and uh, i have no problem doing that in that video when that when that does happen like i said just gotta wait to make sure that none of the big mechanical you know things about awakening draconia don't get changed you know no stance swap changes or or just changing how certain skills interact with stances so just waiting for that and once we do have all the information I will make a video talking about all the combos you can do because there are so many. So first things first, uh, I kind of just want to show you guys one of my favorite combos right now that utilizes a couple of different cancels into extra damage, followed up with the uh, core aerial burst KD ReCC. Um, I found from a lot of situations, you know, Storm Maul grab is going to be your best catch that you can do. Um, so I have done a lot of my combo testing based off of that as being the first catch. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but there are other options and other ways to catch people on this class other than just doing Storm Maul grab. So you, you will have to do a little bit of freestyling if you do get a catch with something like Fate Beckons, uh, and you will have to be a little bit nimble with the skills you choose after that. Uh, but let's just go over this quick combo that I've come up with. I did this with Reezy in terms of, uh, you know, theory crafting this combo and kind of made this up. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so that combo is honestly very, very stylish and feels very, very fun to do. What I'm really doing here is doing Storm Maul grab into Spiteful Soul, first three hits, canceling with Crackling Flame, using Flow Concealed Claw for a little bit of extra burst damage as they're on the ground, because it does have down attack, which is very nice. And then I'm going straight into Core Aerial Burst for the KD, because Concealed Claw does cancel with uh, Core Aerial Burst which is really, really nice, allowing me to get a second CC that is a KD. And then I'm following it up with a Tectonic in Dragon Blood, Savage Decree for a little bit of extra damage because it does cancel with Tectonic really, really nicely. Following it up with a Doombringer for a little bit of extra damage also allows me to reposition to do Sundering Roar for the finishing, uh, a little bit of damage that they may, uh, may need to take. Now, instead of doing Doombringer and Sundering Roar. There are so many other options that you can actually go into. You can choose to go into Dragon Blood, Spiteful Soul. You can go into Savage Decree, Storm Piercer, Spiteful Soul, where uh, they may be get up before the end of the last hit of Spiteful Soul. But there is so many options here that you can really go into, and I'll show you a couple different variations of the combo, and I'll have uh, the little key and put up here so you guys can take a look and see what I'm actually doing. Now in these last couple combos, I haven't really changed the beginning part of the combo, but you can very easily do so if you'd like. So Spiteful Soul gives us three different options to a KD, which allows us to change our combo in a lot of different ways. So for example, we can do Spiteful Soul last hit into the Aerial Burst, which cancels the same exact way as the F Concealed Claw does. So for example, we can just hold R and B, get that last hit off right there, cancel right into the knockdown of Aerial Burst, which is, like I said, pretty insane value. Uh, that's, that's very useful for 1VX situations or smaller scale situations. Uh, for more 1v1 focused stuff, especially versus like an evasion memer, you can go ahead and do Spiteful Soul into the last hit of Tip of the Scale for an accuracy buff, which allows you to get a KD as well. So you can go dink, dink, dink straight into it and then do accuracy buffed up KD that you can follow up with filler damage immediately after that, which is very, very nice if you don't have that accuracy buff up. And you can also do Storm Piercer, which is the uh, last hit cancel into uh, Storm Piercer from Spiteful Soul which allows you to do an air attack KD, which is nice for someone who's a DR target and, you know, giving that extra air attack mod gives a lot of extra damage, which is really, really nice. So you can go ahead and, and do the first three hits and then go straight into Storm Piercer from Spiteful Soul, so. 
And that right there is a, an air attack KD, which is very, very nice. Like I said, this is just a couple of things you can change up at the beginning of your combo. I showed you a couple of different ways to end your combo as well. Really, there are just so many ways to get value out of these skills. Another really cool cancel that is super, super useful for small scale 1v1s and even large scale engaging is the Tectonic Slam from Hexblood into Doombringer, which is a very, very quick float into iframe air attack damage skill, which is kind of crazy. So essentially how this works is you you go in with a, a little tectonic slam here. You you do 4D and you just cancel straight into shift Q, which allows you to get air attacks on the first couple hits of the Doombringer, which adds in a lot of extra damage. And it also makes tectonic slam a lot safer to use when you don't have the core on it, because like I said, it is an unsafe skill. So when you go in and use it, if you don't cancel it with Doombringer, you will most likely get caught in CC'd. But this does allow you to do some really, really, really cool stuff in terms of large scale because of the Dragonflight ability canceling into Tectonic Slam. So you can do a very long range engage and kind of jump people who aren't really expecting you to come in and go straight into an iframe Doombringer, which allows you to reposition and do a couple of other cool things like Savage Decree, Tectonic Slam, and then into an Aerial Burst ReKD. So I'll quick show you how that's going to look here uh, right now. Now that combo is so stylish. It does have a little bit of gaps in protection here and there, and also ending on a frontal guard when you're diving into a ball is a little dicey, but you can see the potential here is actually pretty insane. Now, the main thing that is kind of got me on edge here is that the damage may not be enough to actually make that kill a lot of people before you just get absolutely eviscerated because of the fact that you don't have any healing like Suckdrack does. You're a lot squishier in these diving situations in large scale, meaning that you really got to catch people by surprise and nuke them fast. And if the damage isn't high enough, well, I mean, you're just going to die before you finish off any kills. But on paper, that is a pretty solid engage. And that's opening up with an unsafe skill and making it relatively safe in uh, you know, the grand scheme of things. And obviously, if you do get some CCs with it, you get some air attack, which is obviously very, very nice. But... There's just a lot of stuff just like that where you you just find ways to kind of piece these skills together and get these really nice combos and situations just flowing perfectly. And uh, it's the reason why I love this class so much, man. It's just so much fun. This video is already 22 minutes long and we have just barely scratched the surface of Awakening Draconia. We've spent a lot of time in this video talking about some combos, some PvP related stuff, and I will be making a video going into all of the combos that I found, including movement and all the other tips and tricks that I have for this class thus far after all the testing that I've done. And uh, I plan to upload that after we have the released version on live servers because they're like I said, there still are some things that could potentially change from now until the live release. So stay tuned for that. I will also be making a separate video talking about the PVE going over the PVE setup, PVE add-ons, PVE everything that you need to know for Awakening Draconia once it does reach live servers as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this sneak peek of Awakening Draconia, giving you guys my personal opinions on it, going over some PvP combo stuff, as well as some other really cool cancels and tech that this class has to offer. If you guys did like this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more. We've just recently hit 10,000 subscribers, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, so I guess, you know, only up from here, guys. Let's I do thank you guys for your support very much, and I uh, hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.